Has Earth already entered the Anthropocene age, the age of the humans? It's more than likely that it has, and it has done so faster than any geological age so far. At the heart of this global transformation is human activity since the mid 20th century. For geologists to declare a new epoch takes a great deal of time because geological epochs take thousands, even millions of years to make in order for them to identifiably alter Earth's surface. However, the Anthropocene seems to have unfolded disturbingly fast and propelling its advent goes to the very heart of the raging climate crisis debate. That is because several markers which are considered evidence in the way Earth's surface has changed since the mid 20th century are direct consequences of human activity. Professor Jan Jelasiewicz, a geologist at the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom and a former chairman of the Anthropocene Working Group explains the slightly rise of this extraordinary new epoch. Okay, well, that's that's great to know. Thank you, uh, Mayank. And, and uh, like you, I've been a, a lifelong member of one profession. You know, I'm a geologist, you know, of the yeah. uh, of the old school, you know, hammer and boots and, and notebook and map. <laughs> you are the Indiana Jones type, are you? Uh, not, not at all. It, it's, 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 uh, nothing is, is uh, uh, dramatic or romantic as that. But there's certainly lots of time uh, outside in, in, you know, in the hills, you know, with the uh, 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 looking at the uh, uh, at the rocks and at the landscape. Right. Do you at least dress up like that? Well, we we have the usual field field kit. I, okay. I used to spend uh, um, five six months a year uh, mapping in in the mountains in uh, in Wales. You know, so the weather could be uh, very various, <laughs> from right, wonderful right. to terrible. Uh, you you yeah. try to work on no, no matter what. So you, you... Absolutely. Okay, uh, to start, it has been 23 years since the term Anthropocene was coined. Do we have complete clarity about it now? There is clarity uh, about what the concept represents um, in a geological sense, yes, I, I think we, we we've reached that. Um, if you take the Anthropocene Santa Lotto, looked at by uh, different communities other than geologists, um, uh, then there are a wide range of in interpretations. Um, you know, and uh, in fact, it can be said to be a a whole um, group uh, of concepts, some very different from each other. But the geological concept, uh, essentially, uh, mm -hmm. the, the successor and the development of the one originally proposed by Paul Crutzen, uh, that has now crystallized you know, to become uh, very tight and, and very specific. Uh, what was the trigger in uh, thinking in terms of a new age, uh, which is focused on human beings? Uh, I think it's, it's uh, the, the focus I suspect is rather more directed at the change. Uh, that's the trigger, not simply that humans are, are here okay. and are doing things, but the fact that um, the planet itself has changed and, and fundamental parts of it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's atmosphere, it's geography, it's biology, it's chemistry. Uh, and that in particular was the trigger uh, for Paul Crutzen uh, uh, and uh, that was also, I think, the motivation for you know other previous, if you like, precursors of the Anthropocene right. idea. Um, right. So uh, uh, that it, it is more the planetary perspective than the human right. perspective. You know, it, it strikes me as extraordinary that a body of the size of Earth. Uh, could be changed in such fundamental ways. Uh, it, it's a it's a massive body if you when you think about it, and yet uh, whatever the, the forces are, human or otherwise, it's able to change uh, the way it is. That's very true, and I think that is is one of the reasons why um, 
it has been in in some respects it's been so hard to get the idea across you know that you know the earth of course is a, a planet goodness knows how many tons altogether but huge uh, but the point is that while the planet itself the rocky planet of, of earth you know is indeed you know far it's off scale in, in this sense um it's um the critical part of it, sometimes called the critical zone, uh, the outer part of it, you know, it's uh, it's oceans, it's atmosphere, it's biosphere. That is a very thin skin uh, above the rocky surface. Uh, and when you look at it that way, then of course, it, it then becomes easier to envisage the kind of changes that have taken place um, through human impact. Uh, would it be safe to say that the Megalian age has ended now and uh, we are in the midst of Anthropocene and it's only a question of where and when. Uh, I, I think the formally we're still in the Megalayan because the the, okay. um, the geological decision has not been made uh, so the time span of that continues. Uh, uh, if you like in terms of reality you know if the Megalayan represents a particular character the state of of, uh, of the earth system of the planet uh, and indeed it's not just the megalayan uh, but the whole of the holocene um, right. uh, can be said to have a, a, a set of uh, characters a, a specific climate sea level uh, a, a set of biological and chemical patterns uh, those indeed have drastically changed uh, uh, in, in that so in reality uh, there is now a, a different planetary state um, uh, to which we are giving the name uh, uh, Anthropocene, uh, and which for which there will be the proposal uh, to formalize it, uh, which would, um, if it's accepted as an epoch, that would indeed end the Megalayan and indeed end, end the whole of the Holocene. Right. Uh, the Megalian age was just about 4,200 years, which is within part of the Holocene, which is 12,000 years. I'm curious yes, to know how. Yes, I'm curious to know how this duration is determined. It's well, the uh, the, the the Holocene as a whole is the age of that is determined um, uh, by uh, taking the the time since the ice last retreated from the last ice age since the earth went from a, a, a glacial phase into a, a warmer interglacial phase. Right. Um, and that in itself was quite a lot, it, it, it didn't happen overnight. The, the, uh, the change from glacial to interglacial uh, took several thousand years. In fact, if you take the whole bundle of changes, it took longer than the time scale of the Holocene. Um, uh, but um, one has to make a decision somewhere, you know, so it was a particularly, steep part of the change um, uh, affecting mainly the northern hemisphere uh, that was chosen 11,700 years ago uh, as defined in an ice core um, you know so uh, and that is an effective practical pragmatic separation you know of essentially a, an interglacial state the one in which human civilization developed uh, and the previous uh, state of of the pleistocene um, which is a rather a longer um, uh, uh, climatically variable epoch with, with many advances of, of, of ice. Um, now the rationale for the Megalayan, you know, uh, and, and for the, the other two uh, ages, you know, of, 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 the, um, uh, of the Holocene, the, the Greenlandian and the, the North Grippian, right. uh, that arose because the scientists working on the Holocene had uh, over time informally divided it in, into three, uh, if you like, in the early, middle and, and late, or in, uh, upper, middle and lower, if one, one is talking about strata. Um, uh, uh, but without the boundaries of those being fixed, um, one person's um, late Holocene um, could be quite different from another person's uh, late Holocene. It, the, the boundary could differ by you know, a few thousand years even. Uh, in that. Uh, so the decision was taken to try and rationalize this uh, and to create, um, subdivide the Holocene uh, along the lines of tradition, uh, but now precisely, 
you know, so, uh, and, and that was done a few years ago successfully. Uh, and now the three divisions are much, if you like, um, uh, the clearer, uh, the former, uh, uh, you know, they make geological language more precise. You know, if, if one person's uh, Middle Holocene, you know, the, the, the North Caribbean is, is the same as another's. I believe there are nine uh, specific locations under scrutiny to examine whether and how humans have impacted the planet such as to alter its surface. One of them would be, uh, I'm just saying it for the benefit of my viewers, I am not telling you. So one of them would be uh, the designation of the golden spike. How close are you to announcing that? Well, the work has been done. Uh, the uh, uh, you know there were originally uh, twelve locations uh, uh, chosen around the Earth, um, partly to represent uh, different environments. You know, some are in lakes, some are in shallow seas, uh, some are in living coral skeletons because they are an extraordinarily good archive. You know, of uh, of, of recent uh, planetary change, um, uh, and uh, the early stages that got whittled down to nine. The ones which have, if you like. Um, the best defined, the most precisely defined history, uh, which in some cases is to annual level or better. So you, you can, uh, within those records of layers of mud in a lake or in an estuary uh, or parts of a coral skeleton, you can define a stratum um, uh, 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 narrower, more precise than a single year. <laughs> um, uh, so it's taken the best um, uh, of those, which are, are the nine, um, uh, uh, a whole lot of analyses was done on that to, to track how the Earth had changed and how those signals from Earth change was absorbed into the strata. Um, the results are now in, they, they're, they're being published, um, you know, so they, they're, they're, if you like, impress <laughs> uh, right. at the moment. And the voting has started, you know, so the, you know, it, it, they have to be whittled down from nine into one, uh, it, it's been whittled down to, uh, you know, so th 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 that process has started uh, okay. and it will likely take another month or two, I would guess. Okay. Would you care to tell us what markers you look for uh, when you go through these sites that tell you that these are results of uh, human activity? There are a whole range of them. There's a whole array okay. of, of what we call stratigraphic proxies. That is, that is markers of some kind of environmental change that have taken place uh, and which are trapped within sediments. Um, uh, 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 one kind is, is um, uh, uh, simply physical, things like um, plastic particles. So uh, microplastics, fibers, you know, let's say from the, the fleece I'm wearing here now, um, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, uh, which are, are washed into lakes and washed into the sea. Uh, and now they, they are found worldwide, you know, in sedimentary layers, uh, and they begin to appear about the mid 20th century. So that is one marker. Uh, um, uh, another marker is um, uh, different types of new chemicals, you know, things like pesticides, DDT, Dieldrin, Aldrin, right. um, you know, all of those are present in trace amounts uh, in, in these sediments. And again, they appear in that mid 20th century. Uh, another one is the chemistry of carbon, uh, because um, we've burnt uh, collectively so much coal, oil and gas, that has changed the uh, the isotopic chemistry, the proportion of light carbon-12 to heavy carbon-13 um, uh, in things like organic matter preserved in sediments and in things like shell material. Um, uh, and that is also being picked up uh, in those analyses. Uh, another marker is uh, from the burning uh, of, of, of those fossil fuels is in effect fossil smoke particles, uh, things okay. called spherical carbonate, parts of the fly ash in, in, in effect. Uh, and those particles are, are turning up. Um, uh, they begin a little bit before in some places, you know, in, in the Industrial Revolution, uh, but there's a real upsurge in them, again, in this mid 20th century, what's been called the Great Acceleration. Um, uh, and radioactive particles as well, they're about the clearest and sharpest, the particles of plutonium, uh, the extra radiocarbon, um, uh, radioactive iodine, cesium, um, uh, americium, things like that. 
uh, all of those uh, are appearing in sedimentary layers around the mid-20th century. So if, uh, I'm glad you said that because it's a perfect segue for me. Uh, in terms of radioactive markers, uh, would, wouldn't it be easier then to date it back to, say, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki attack? And that would have left something and followed by several nuclear tests that have happened. That uh, was, in, yeah, we originally made that suggestion that it, not, not the, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but the very first explosion, the, the test. Okay, um, okay. Uh, the Trinity. The, the Manhattan uh, Project. The Manhattan Project, indeed. Uh, and, and, okay. Uh, and that could then be tied, you know, to the the very minute <laughs> of the hour okay. of, of that uh, 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 explosion. Uh, the trouble with those as time markers is that the signals um, uh, were, of course, devastating locally uh, and tragic uh, in, in, for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, but these were small yield, um, okay. relatively small yield uh, 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 explosions and the radioactivity only spread over part of the world. Um, in the early 1950s, with the bigger H-bomb tests, uh, of which there were a fair number, uh, that pushed you know, the radioactivity into the stratosphere. It spread all around the Earth, you know, even as far as Antarctica uh, and, and the North Pole. Um, uh, and that uh, roughly early 1950s sign seems to be the sharpest and most widely applicable time marker, you know, for, you know, to, to mark the beginning of a, 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 a unit of time and a unit of strata. I see. Uh, you know, I, I was wondering how widespread should these changes be globally? Uh, if they are specific to a particular site, uh, which yields the kind of markers we are talking about, but they are not present globally, would you still consider that as the golden spike? Uh, the golden spike uh, uh, should ideally have the, 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 the best range of global markers, uh, okay. and, and that is part of the decision-making process. Uh, in practice, what we found is that uh, many of these signals are indeed global. Uh, that the, the radioactivity ones, even fly ash, <laughs> uh, has right. been found uh, in Antarctica, uh, amazingly, you know, carried by winds you know, many thousands of kilometers. Um, plastics we're finding pretty much everywhere. Again, they're being carried by both wind and water. Uh, right. So one of the characteristics of the Anthropocene uh, is that there are a, a whole range of quite distinctive markers uh, which are, in effect, global. They, they affect pretty much all of the Earth's surface. Uh, is it fair to ask at what, what depth do you look at? Uh, is it purely on the surface or if you go down the rocks, the level, the, the various uh, strata of uh, rocks, how far, how deep do you go? Within layers of sediment, which have uh, uh, formed, let's say, you know, over the last few um, uh, centuries or millennia, if you, let's say you take a, a long-lived lake, then it right. will have layers of mud and silt in it, uh, which can go back sometimes even millions of years. Uh, and if they're well-preserved, they can give a, a very precise archive okay. uh, of that local history. Uh, in practice, um, for this project, um, um, we're going, we try to go back um, uh, a few hundred years, you know, to give good context. Uh, some of them go back, you know, a, a thousand years or more in some of the exercises that have been done uh, with a focus, as I said, on, on uh, now it's been decided that the mid-20th century level is the clearest and sharpest. That is where focus is being placed and, and um, year by year evidence is being looked for. Uh, do you expect uh, the Anthropocene, once you formalize it, to last a very long time compared to other ages? Uh, well, one, it's not certain it will be formalized because it, it has a number of barriers to get through. Okay. Um, uh, uh, you know, maybe, the, uh, uh, and for some geologists, the Anthropocene is still a, uh, a new um, uh, 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 concept, uh, rather disturbing, um, certainly disturbingly short. You know, when one normally right. talks in terms of thousands and millions of years, we suddenly have an epoch lasting a human lifetime uh, so far. Uh, but with the, uh, so the formalization part is still 
as I say, we'll see how the votes go at the various levels right. you know, of the decision makers. Uh, but the Anthropocene condition, if you like, the planetary state, um, uh, is, will be very long-lived. I see. Um, the climatic consequences themselves will go up. Will, um, it, it's hard to see how they won't last for at least many tens of thousands of years. Um, and the biological consequences already have right. reset the, the, the course of Earth's biological evolution. Uh, and of course, Earth's future paleontological evolution right. um, uh, in that case. So uh, it really is a, a different kind of world, a different kind of planet that is now starting. Right. Uh, and that is irreversible in many respects. So it's fair to say that as long as humans are around, and it seems we would be there for a while at least if we don't kill ourselves, uh, we we would continue to make fundamental changes to Earth's surface. At, 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 at current rates and patterns, yes, for sure. You know, and, and say that you know humans have been affecting. Uh, the Earth for many thousands of years in, in various ways. They've caused extinctions thousands of years ago, the woolly mammoth and, and so forth. Uh, right. They've been cutting down trees and so on. Uh, but until very recently, uh, without disturbing the fundamental parameters of climate, of sea level, you know, of, of the integrity of the biosphere, um, what has changed in the past um, century, couple of centuries um, and, and most abruptly in, in the last 70 years or so uh, is that human impacts are now big enough to fundamentally disturb you know, the, 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 these planetary parameters. Um, and these disturbances will have, you know, will reverberate <laughs> yeah. uh, for a long time. And of course, uh, you know, if humans continue along the same kind of patterns, you know, with the same kinds of behavior and impacts, uh, then those uh, those changes can only intensify. Right. You know, this is rather troubling in the sense that, uh, like you mentioned, in, in, in human lifetime, if we are able to make such a dramatic shift in Earth, it, it I mean, other, four, other ages took a long time to come, become what they became. In this uh, particular case, the Anthropocene, if we are talking about the mid 20th century to now, uh, it's a it's a very very rapid change. It, it is, if you like, the the um, you know the nearest thing uh, yeah. to a very major impact new, uh, meteorite impact strike. You know, so uh, I can only think of one boundary. You know, on Earth, one geological boundary on Earth, which is sharper, right. uh, and if you like, more instantaneously transformational. You know, and that is the end Cretaceous boundary. Right. Um, it, uh, as you said, the others uh, took, um, you know, as far as we can work out, um, uh, time intervals ranging from thousands to several million years to 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 be carried out. Yeah. So this, yes, this it, it is a, if you like, a hammer blow. <laughs> you know, to the Earth system. Yeah. So in, in in a sense, we are the human version of that meteorite strike, right? Collectively. Yes, yes, I, I think that that is a fair analogy. Okay, uh, just last couple of things, Professor. Uh, there are scientists who oppose uh, the Anthropocene as, as, as a new epoch. How do you counter them? Uh, well, the, the, there is um, by discussion, by debate, uh, and by, uh, uh, by exchange of views of, of, of perspective, uh, and of course, by the evidence itself in, in that. Um, uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, uh, there are um, colleagues of ours in, in geology uh, who are unhappy at the idea of formalizing the Anthropocene um, because it is so brief, so um, so different. You know, so the idea of uh, accepting things like plastics uh, and concrete. You know, as part of geological evidence, you know, does not come easily to a lifelong geologist. Okay. You know, <laughs> I say that as one myself. Uh, and of course, the uh, one thing that has um, uh, uh, been caught up uh, with the Anthropocene is politics. You know, most you know, we, the geological timescale so far has been blissfully apolitical. 
um, in that. Right. Uh, with the Anthropocene, of course, um, you know, that state would end, you know, for the geological time scale. And again, that is uh, oh. certainly uncomfortable for a number of my colleagues. Yeah. Um, uh, and other in uh, other disciplines, let's say, um, um, uh, uh, colleagues make the point that human impact started a long time ago. Um, uh, you know, they, they focus on the anthropo part of the word. Right. Uh, indeed, they did. There, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, well, by that, that argument, you would say that 200,000 years ago when uh, Homo sapiens emerged, if that's uh, oh, their oh. argument. Or 50,000 years ago, when, when the first okay. detectable impacts of us as anything other than one okay. of many species, that, that's, that's the case. Um, uh, but that is quite a different concept. You know, the fact that humans uh, are, are, you know, um, you know, are an impactful species, that being leaving impacts, you know, and transforming um, climate, sea level, the biosphere, you know, are, are two very different scales uh, of, of, of change uh, and of influence. Um, uh, and it, if you like, with the geological interpretation of the Anthropocene, it, we, we're looking in particularly at these, um, at the scale of planetary impact, right. know, to distinguish that, you know, from the long, deep, very deep roots, you know, of farming, uh, of, of hunting, you know, of, of migrations of humans and and and, and so on uh, since this to to conclude since this ties into the politics of climate crisis now uh climate crisis has suddenly become very globally understood at least at a superficial level people know about the climate crisis yes. the rise of anthropocene in a sense is related to that so uh, the uh, uh, my question is: Do policymakers really understand what the implications are of declaring this to be the age of humans? Uh, I think some do. Uh, at least some colleagues okay. of mine in, in 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 you know the humanities and social sciences um, uh, are, are well aware of the potential impact and importance you know of, um, uh, of if, if you like this this kind of formal geological verification of, of, okay. um, uh, of that. Uh, certainly, you know, um, let's say, um, you know, the, the, um, uh, the late Bruno Latour, for instance, you know, you know, who was very involved in these sorts of climate politics, uh, was also um, uh, very interested and supportive of, you know, the, the, the work, you know, of the, the Anthropocene um, okay. uh, uh, scientists. Um, but not all. I mean, it's still not a, 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 a household term, you know. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and of course, it's more wider. It's, it's it, 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 indeed when we first started work uh, on the Anthropocene, you know, a few years yeah. after Crutzen's original um, uh, proposal of the idea, uh, we were saying that uh, climate change was an incipient part. Uh, of the Anthropocene, you know, we were focusing rather more on uh, right. the chemical pollution changes, the biosphere changes, and so on. Um, uh, since that time, of course, climate uh, between 2000 uh, and now, um, global uh, climate has warmed by uh, a little more than half a degree centigrade. Um, right. yeah. uh, you know, there are several tens of, 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 of um, ppm more CO2, carbon dioxide in the air, and so on. Uh, so things are moving very fast, and the right. climate is becoming an uh, ever larger part of the Anthropocene, almost year by year. Right. Does the uh, Anthropocene Working Group, which you chaired once, uh, have a problem of nomenclature? Suppose you had called it something other than uh, Anthropocene, something more trendy. Do you think that might have created greater uh, understanding among policymakers? Well, it, it's hard to say. I mean, names are, are, are as you know, are tricky things. Uh, and yeah. the name Anthropocene was, was simply purely improvised on the spur of the moment by Paul Crutzen. Um, you know, but he, it's a great he, name. It's a great it's name. It's a great name. It's very, it has, a, if you like, a, a visceral impact um, to it. Uh, and it clearly, I think it clearly helped um, its take up, you know, by a number of communities. First of all, the Earth System Science community that Paul worked in. Uh, and then more widely, um, uh, but it does have, um, you know, it, it is a bit of a poison chalice uh, in that it, it, it uh, uh, you know, with its accent on the human, the anthropo side of things, 
uh, which gives it connotations which it, it may not completely have. For instance, it's essentially a planetary term. It's a term of planetary change. Humans have happened to cause them, but had they been caused by any other, you know, any anything else, you know, by meteorite impact, by uh, extraordinary volcanic eruptions or whatever, it would have been just as important, just as significant, and just as worthy Indeed. of name as the rock. Um, uh, uh, so the, uh, you know, the anthropo side does bring in complications uh, and sometimes I think misunderstanding, you know, which, you know, it, it takes a deal of talking through and discussion through, you know, right. to, to say that this is a part of a planet's history uh, uh, and it's not per se a part of human history, though clearly, of course, the two are now very closely intertwined. Yeah. And before I let you go, do you see with this the advent of, uh, on the education side, the rise of Anthropocene sciences that people can, courses are being offered in that? Do you see that possibility or it's already happening? It's already happening. You know, the, the, there are already Anthropocene textbooks, there are Anthropocene courses, um, there's okay. an Anthropocene curriculum uh, of the House der Kultur in der Welt in Berlin, which has been supporting a lot of this work. Um, uh, and it's very, uh, 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 that I think is one of the positive things about it, uh, partly because um, it's intensely cross disciplinary. You know, so the Anthropocene, um, you know, it does, you, you cannot escape the science and you cannot escape the humanities part of it. Uh, and mm -hmm. you cannot escape using art to, to, to help get these, these concepts across. Uh, so, uh, you know, it has helped forge a, a, a number of connections and built networks uh, which would not have existed before. 